welcome back to another Artifact Corner. Today we will be looking at an engraving of our first president, George Washington. This engraving was created by a man named W. Warner, and it is based on a painting that was done by Colonel John Trumbull. The original, titled George Washington at Trenton, per the inscription at the bottom of the engraving, is at Yale College, and that is where the original painting remains to this day. So why do we have this? Well, Henry Delord was a huge fan of George Washington and emulated him in many ways. It's not surprising that Henry would have an engraving of Washington. So who was John Trumbull, the man who created this iconic image of Washington? Let's learn a bit more about John Trumbull. John Trumbull was born on June 6, 1756 in Lebanon in the colony of Connecticut to Jonathan and Faith Trumbull. His father actually served as the governor of Connecticut from 1769 to 1784. He had two older brothers, Joseph Trumbull, the first commissary general of the Continental Army in the Revolutionary War, and Jonathan Trumbull Jr., who became the second speaker of the House of Representatives. When he was five years old, he had a bad fall down a flight of stairs and bruised his left eye. The bruise healed, but he had lost sight in his left eye. In 1771, at the age of 15, he started his secondary education at Harvard College. He graduated in 1773. When the American Revolution began, he immediately joined the army and was in Boston when Washington arrived to take control of the Continental Army. He did scouting missions to sketch the British lines, he witnessed the Battle of Bunker Hill, and was appointed second aide-de-camp to General Washington. He resigned from the army in 1777. By 1780, he was practically penniless and decided to make art his livelihood. In 1780, he traveled to London to study under the well-known artist Benjamin West. It was West who suggested that Trumbull paint scenes from his time in the Revolutionary War. On September 23, 1780, British agent Major John Andre was captured by the Continental Army troops in North America. He was hanged as a spy on October 2, 1780. After news reached Great Britain, outrage flared and Trumbull was arrested for treason, since he was known to be an officer in the Continental Army and of similar rank to Andre. Trumbull was locked up for seven months in Bridewell Prison. Following his release, he sailed back to the United States. In 1784, following the end of the American Revolution, he traveled back to London to resume his tutelage under West. He then traveled to Paris and spent time with Thomas Jefferson. Trumbull's Declaration of Independence painting was purchased by the United States Congress along with three of his other Revolutionary-era portraits. Each of these portraits now hang in the United States Capitol Rotunda at the United States Capitol in Washington, D.C. Trumbull was appointed President of the American Academy of the Fine Arts in New York City, serving from 1816 to 1836. Trumbull wrote his autobiography, which he published in 1841, he died in New York City at the age of 87 on November 10, 1843. John Trumbull led an extraordinary life and knew most of the people who helped to create the United States. It is incredible that an artist who was blind in one eye created such beautiful works of art. We are so lucky to have this piece in our collections. Thanks so much for stopping by.